vacation, and I don't know about y'all, but my Facebook feed is flooded with vacation pictures with people going south and people going to the beach and people going and visiting family that are out of state. Um, we just, last month, we had to take a little bit of a three-day trip to Henderson, and so uh, with, with travel plans, we have to think about what we need to pack, what we need to buy to pack, what we need to have, you know, on hand when we're gone. And, and um, so I kind of took a twist on that for today, and um, so our, our, we're going to talk about baggage claims, we're going to talk about traveling, and we're going to talk about what that means in the spiritual life. When we travel, um, we, we never leave home without luggage. I mean, we would think, if somebody left home without luggage, we would think they were making a terrible mistake. We might even say, that's an idiotic thing to do. You're going to need at least clothes, you're going to need money, you're going to need things. Um, it would be in case we pack for just in case. Um, if I knew when I was packing for the boys when they were younger, and I knew we were going to be gone for three or four days, I packed a dozen outfits because they're kids, and just in case they spill something, they trip on something, they tear something, there's a backup, you know? Um, and, and we still do it today. Well, we'll pack, when I pack the family, when we're going out, I'll pack an extra pair of pants or I'll pack an extra shirt because I know somebody's going to spill something, somebody's going to drop something, and we need to have an extra on hand. So we do a lot of packing for just in case moments. But we also pack for security. We pack things that make us feel more secure. We pack, um, we pack our licenses and we pack money and we pack extra money and traveler's checks if they still use those. Uh, we, we pack things that make us feel like if I'm away from home where I can't access my stuff, I'm still safe because I have this I'm taking with me. This is my emergency kit. This is my first aid kit. These are things that we pack just so we feel safe. That's why we pack and that's why we um, put such emphasis on luggage. We never, even if we're not traveling for vacation, for work, for, for whatever, even if we're not traveling for those reasons, maybe we're just heading to the mall. Maybe we're just going to buy some shoes. We don't leave our home without some type of baggage. We take a wallet. We take a purse, we take a cell phone case. Some of the cases have places for you to put your cards and your money in. We take a cell phone. Most of us will take our cell phone with us. We don't leave with some kind of baggage. But what if we did? What if the next time you wanted to run to the mall or the next time you needed to run to Target, you just walked out the door? You didn't grab your phone, you didn't grab your money, you didn't grab your chapstick, you didn't grab the hair scrunchie, you just got up and walked out the door. That gives me palpitations. <laughs> I can't go out the door and not grab something. I've got to grab something. And we, we imitate that in our spiritual lives a lot. We don't go without taking some baggage with us. We walk around with baggage. We constantly have baggage. Instead of an extra pair of underwear, it is the guilt of what we did last night. Instead of chapstick, because our lips are chapped, it's an unhealed wound because we just won't let God deal with it. Instead of uh, a spare change of clothes or instead of extra money, we pack around the shame of what nobody knows and the secrets that we're trying to hide. We pack around bitterness. We pack around uh, uh, comparisons. We pack around uh, jealousy. And we don't even realize it has those names, but we're packing all of that every time we leave the house. Whether we're going for a long trip or whether we're just running out, every time we leave God's presence, every time we leave the church, every time we leave our prayer closets, whatever it is, we walk out with luggage. We walk out with more baggage because we're not willing to surrender that. We're not willing to say, I'm just going to go out and do what I have to do today. We wouldn't think about going out without our walls up because we've been hurt in the past and we're not going to subject ourselves to that pain again. We, we wouldn't think about going to, a, to an engagement dressed down because we think we've got to be dressed like everybody else and be presentable. We wouldn't dare go to, a, to a, a meeting with somebody in our pajamas. We wouldn't dare do that. We have to at least put on our best clothes because again, that's a sense of security. We find security, we find a fitting in moment in what we're wearing. We carry our biases everywhere we go. We carry um, the idea of a denomination. They got it all wrong because we were hurt in that church. And so we have an idea about what all churches are like. And so we have these ideas about this man treats me this way, and this person goes to his church, so they must think that too. And we carry around this constant circle and turmoil of baggage in our spiritual lives. Jesus called us to go. Great Commission was go into all the nations and, and, and make disciples and baptize. The idea was we're supposed to go. Never once did he say, go take all your junk with you. He just said, go. And then the pretty thing is, if you really uh, look at the scriptures, he tells us exactly what it should look like when we go minister because he sent out 72 disciples to do just that. He took 72 disciples and he said, I want you to go and minister. I want you to go and cleanse. I want you to go and heal. I want you to, the same thing he's telling us to do. He tells them to go. And then he tells them, 
how that should look. And he does it in Luke 10, verse 4. He tells them to carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. He told them to leave their house without their purse, without their keys, without their wallet. They had no money. They had no overnight accommodations. They had no change of robes. They had no ritualistic herb. They had nothing. He said, go. That's all you get to do. You don't get to gather up stuff. You don't get to plan. You just have to go. Your body, that's it. You're, you're off. He, t he tells them that, and that's important in the scriptures because later he's going to tell us to do the same thing, and now we know what it's supposed to look like because he just told us how he did it with the 72. We, we follow the command to go, but then we carry all this luggage with us. We carry our, our money bags because, you know, somebody's got to provide for our needs. Somebody's got to make sure we get fed. Somebody's got to make sure we have lodging. Somebody's got, we take our money. We take our change of clothes because we have to be able to compete. We have to be able to be taken seriously, and we begin to add a bunch of luggage when we go to minister to people, preconceived ideas about people, preconceived ideas about what they think about us. You know, we're, we're so ready to be attacked, we just automatically assume they're gonna. And we put that on them and we end up going, but we've taken a lot of junk with us when we go. Having baggage costs extra. If you're gonna fly on a plane on average, it costs 26 to $36 for a carry-on. Now, depending on the airline, most of them, that, that's up to four bags. You can check four bags for that price before it goes up. Doesn't matter if you only have one bag that you want to take on as a carry-on. You have to pay an additional $26 to $36, depending on what airline you use. So if you have luggage when you travel, you have to pay extra for that. And we all have luggage when we travel. We've already discussed that. So no matter what, carrying around baggage costs you. And in the same way... When we carry the baggage of sin, when we carry the baggage of guilt, when we carry the, the, the baggage of unhealed wounds, of, of, of unforgiveness in our hearts, when we carry that, there's a price. It costs us more. It's harder to witness to somebody about being broken when you're sitting there broken. It is hard to witness to somebody about how God provides when they watch you count your pennies. It is hard to tell somebody that Jesus set them free while they watch you caught in bondage. Your baggage is costing you dearly. Jesus asked you to go and tell everybody about him, love everybody about him, and it's costing you the ability to do that because you're weighed down with all of the baggage. Hurting people hurt people. They don't do it out of hateness. They don't do it because they want to single you out. They don't do it because they're mad at you. If they're hurt and if they're broken, people act out of their hurt. They act out of their brokenness. So if you have an unforgived um, if you have an unforgiven grudge, if you have a pain that you haven't let God deal with, if you have something that's just not something you and God want to talk about, lots of times you're going to hurt somebody out of that. Because if somebody mirrors that or somebody acts like that or somebody does the same thing that hurt you in the first place, you put all of that on them and you act out like that. When we don't have peace, we have chaos. And God is a God of peace. God likes order. God likes direction. God, it, um, the scripture says uh, that God orders our steps, and everybody likes to quote that saying that meaning God has planned our steps, and that's true, but that word ordered means it's also done in peace. He didn't just, you know, throw up a storm and say, all right, I'm going to walk with you through it. He said, I'm going to give you peace through it. I've ordered, I've taken the chaos and put it to rest so that when you walk through it, you're good to go. Well, the problem is we have all this luggage and all this baggage, and um, when the boys were little and I had a diaper bag and I always carried a bigger kind of person. I had a diaper bag and I had a purse and then I had my work briefcase and my laptop and all my work stuff and I would go to church. I'm telling you, it's hard to carry all of that baggage, a car seat, an infant seat, and a three-year-old into the church by yourself. It's hard to carry around extra baggage. And what happens is when we carry that spiritual baggage, it's hard to find peace there because we're struggling to hold on to it. We're struggling not to let it fall to the ground. We're struggling not to forget it. We're struggling to hold on to it. And the additional cost lots of times ends up being we hurt other people. Our own witness is tarnished. They doubt what we say because it's not what we're doing. Um, there, it just costs so much. It's, to carry the heavy burden, the extra baggage, that journey is going to be real expensive. In the long run, it's going to be expensive even if you don't see it now. And here's the other thing. Most venues won't allow it. Um, our family has done... Uh, it's not Midnight Madness anymore, it's Big Blue Madness with the cats for years. And if you go to Rupp Arena for a concert, for a sporting event, for any kind of entertainment event, there's signs everywhere. No bags, no purses. You can't bring them in because it's a security risk. They can't see if you have a weapon in there, you know, so they're like, you can have a small, like, wallet. You can have a wristlet. 
You can have your pockets and whatever, but you can't take big bags into Rupp Arena when there's an event going on. Rupp Arena is not the only big venue that does that. So there's a lot of stores at the mall that will have that, that post. And a lot of places have the rule, if you've got baggage, you can't come in. You can't bring it with you. You're welcome to come. The baggage isn't welcome to come with you. So what happens is all of the joy and all of the blessings and all of the peace that God has promised us, we can't access it if we have the baggage with us. It has to go so we can enjoy the entertainment. It has to be left at home so that we can walk in freedom. It has to be, all right, let's shove that in the trunk and deal with it later so that we can live. It has to be, all right, I'm going to leave this at home and I'm not leaving with this because I know we're going to rough right now and they're not going to let me take it in, so I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to go enjoy the night. I'm going to go have fun with family. I'm going to go be loved by relatives. I'm going to go watch my kids be thrilled. I'm going to enjoy watching the new team. I'm going to have all of this, the food, because I'm all about the food. I'm going to have all this unhealthy food that I'm about. All of this is my thing. And so if I demand that I have to carry this big bag, they're not going to let me enjoy anything. And our spiritual lives are the same way. If you demand that you have to have those walls, that you have to have what you like, your bias, your preconceived idea of what God thinks is holy, if you have to have your religious system, you can't get any of the joy. You can't get any of the blessings because your baggage can't go there. It can't happen there. Unhappy people have lots of baggage. They just do because they're unwilling to drop it. Lots of times people get caught in a victim mentality. Bad things have happened to them for sure. They've experienced bad things, their fault or otherwise, or both. It's, it, it's life. We live in a broken world and you're going to get hurt. I hate it, but you are. And there are people that that's happened to and it's become their mentality. And they wouldn't dare go to a social gathering that they don't talk about their hurt. That they don't talk about the people who hurt them. That they don't talk about the circumstance that hurt them. It, they never put that baggage down. It's become who they are. And so they never get to the point of getting to the place where God wants to offer freedom, where God wants to offer joy, where God wants to offer peace, where God wants to offer relationship. They never get to that place because they're holding really tight to that baggage. It's baggage we're never meant to carry because baggage steals joy. You can't grow in the fruits of the Spirit if you're packing around a bunch of bags. It doesn't work that way. And here's the, bigger, the biggest part about baggage, and that's it's a distraction. When the boys were little around, I was having to carry all that kind of stuff. I wasn't paying attention to much else. <laughs> they, it gets your attention. If you're going through a, 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 an airport and you've got a stack of bags and you're going on an extended trip, it is hard to keep up with your bags, your boarding pass, your passport, your struggling kid, your husband who wants to stop at Cinnabon. It's hard because you're distracted. You've got all this stuff. <laughs> it's hard because you have all of this stuff and you're distracted from your destination. You are distracted from the purpose of what you're doing. Instead of being at the airport thrilled that you're about to go on a vacation, you're at the airport distracted by the mess, by the chaos, by the disorder that it has become. Hebrews 12.1 addresses that. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a crowd of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We have a purpose. And we can't run a race carrying baggage. Can you imagine if in the Summer Olympics they told all of the runners they had to throw a backpack on? <laughs> or they told all of the, the relay racers instead of carrying a baton they had to carry one of those rolling suitcases? <laughs> you wouldn't be having record breaking numbers. There wouldn't be any records made. And, and the runners probably would go, I'm not running with that. I'm not going to do it. They just wouldn't do it. <laughs> They'd be like, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. That would look ridiculous, number one. And I wouldn't be able to run my race. We do that in our spiritual lives every day. Instead of focusing on our purpose, we get distracted by all of the stuff. And instead of being like the runner going, I'm not going to do that, we decide, well, this has to be handled and I have to worry about it. And we forget we have a purpose. We forget we have a race to be run. Jesus ends the instruction in Luke 10 with a warning to speak to nobody on their way. Now, for a long time, I thought he was just, you know, being on me. I was like, I thought, you're supposed to say hello to people. It's polite. It doesn't cost that much to smile and nod, you know, was my thought. But there was a bigger purpose that he was getting to them because he didn't want them to get distracted. He's already taken away all their luggage. He's already taken away all their baggage. 
but he wants them to stay focused on their purpose. And if they stop and start talking to this guy, and this guy lost his job last week, and he needs extra money for rent, and then his brother comes over, and his brother's got a job, but his brother needs help with groceries, and then before you know it, you're not getting anywhere. If God has called you on a purpose, Jesus was saying, don't talk to anybody. There are people that are going to help them. God has called people to help them. Your purpose is to go. If God's called you to minister to the hungry, you don't get distracted by paying rent for people. You focus on ministering to the hungry. If God calls you to preach to people, you don't get distracted by, by evangelism dates. You don't abandon your church for a whole summer so you can preach across the globe. Either you're a pastor or you're an evangelist. You can't do both because you're distracted from both. It doesn't work that way. So when Jesus said, don't talk to anybody, he said, you have a purpose and you have a point to what you're doing and you have got to stay focused. I'm going to take away the baggage and I'm going to take away any and all distraction. What has your attention has influence. What keeps your attention has mastered you. So if something grabs your attention, it can influence your thoughts. If it holds your attention and keeps it, it's going to master your thoughts. Our luggage is what masters our thoughts most of the time. We decide what we're going to do based on past experience. We decide who we're going to trust based on the gossip that we've heard. We decide what the truth is based on what we were taught our whole lives. We get distracted and we cling to that luggage and it masters us. And we act and we live that way. And Jesus was saying, don't talk to anybody. Stay focused. Stay where you're supposed to be. You can worry about your baggage. Or you can run your race, but you can't do both. And Christians, non-Christians, all of us for so long have chosen to worry about our baggage. Because it's heavy, and it's deep, and it does control our thoughts, and it does control our minds. Instead of saying, this isn't something I'm supposed to carry. I'm not supposed to walk around wounded. I'm not supposed to walk around rejected. I'm not supposed to walk around alone. I'm not supposed to walk around in guilt and in shame. I'm not supposed to think and see myself as a sinner. I'm not supposed to do any of that. And we begin to shed that. Then the baggage is gone and our focus is back on God and where it belongs. We can't run the race and worry about our baggage, but we're so caught up in our baggage because we think we deserve it. Because somebody a long time ago told us this is the way it was. Because there's no good reason besides the fact we stopped listening to the truth. It can be scary to leave your baggage behind. We would never take a vacation without luggage. We would not do it. I don't care how many people told us we should do it. We wouldn't because we know better. There's only one way any of us would go on vacation without any luggage. And it would be if the vacation people, <laughs> whoever's in charge of your vacation, travel agent, I don't know, if they looked at you and they said, everything is paid for. You don't have to pay for any food from the time you leave your door. I don't care if it's a snack. It's done. You don't have to pay for lodgings that we've got all of your clothes sizes and the, the clothes are going to be there in your room when you get there. Wow, that's your entertainment and your tickets are going to be on the table when you get there. You're going to have a daily allotment of $1,600 when you get there. None of us would pack anything. There's no need. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. If you go with me, I will provide. I will heal. I will manifest. I will be shown. I will do the work. You just get to come along. And we still want to take all the bags with us. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that we would see that. Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply every need according to his riches in Jesus Christ. Every need you got. So Jesus is saying, you carry around these, this religiosity that makes you holy when I'm the one that makes you holy. Drop that, when, drop that bag down. You carry around this weight of sin like it means you're not worthy, but I called you a saint. I called you a brother and sister. I called you a daughter and a son. I called you a co-heir to the very throne of God. Put that bag down. And then we get up and we carry what we think holy looks like. And Jesus says again, look at Peter, far from perfect. Look at Paul, killed a bunch of Christians. I've taken care of that. Put it down. And every time we decide we need a bag for this vacation Jesus is bringing us on, he's saying, nope. I'm gonna, we've got that covered. You leave your knapsack. You leave your money. You leave your sandals. I'm going to be the source. When we really trust him to do that, we can drop all of the baggage we carry. God promises to provide all that we need. Healing, peace, courage, hope, love. Along this journey, we're going to need all of those in different doses. And God's going to provide all of it. And he promises to it. 
let today's service, let tonight's sermon, let this moment, you go home and say your prayers, whatever you do, let it be the day you check that baggage for the last time. Don't go back and get them. Don't decide you need a security guard for just in case. Because <laughs> there's no just in case with Jesus. It was done 2,000 years ago. It can't be undone. There's no need for a just in case. He's still got it covered. Even if you try something new, he's already got it covered. You don't need a just in case. It's scary to step out without your baggage because that means you have to trust him completely. That means you have to start seeing hearts instead of people. That means you have to start seeing souls instead of hurt people. You have to start seeing what God sees in others because that's the only way you're going to trust him completely to see what he sees in you. The only way I can really believe he's going to promise that for me is if I see him doing it for you. That's the example we said. It's time to check our bags this summer. It's time to go without any baggage because Jesus has already given us an all-expense pay trip. We don't need anything at all. It's covered. Father, we're thankful that, that there is no baggage you haven't already tended to. We're thankful that we can leave it at your feet, Lord, and you'll chuck it and deal with it, and we don't have to pick it back up. Lord, we're thankful that you give us the strength and the courage. And God, I pray that each and every day we find more and more ways that you have provided, more and more ways that you've given courage and a peace and a hope, God, that we can share with others and see others shed the baggage that's catching them up. God, I pray that we learn to run this race and run it well. Lord, because we don't have fear of something tripping us up because we know you're running it and you're running it with us. You're ordering our steps every every step of the way and we're thankful for that, Lord. I, I thank you for being with us this evening and God, I thank you for being the baggage handler that it's yours and it's not ours and we can walk in freedom. We worship you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.